Good morning, folks. Nice shot of the northern incoming heliographic quadrant. Today we see the earthquake uptick begin again. We've got weather and top science news. So let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the stealthily seething star with a bright active region that lacks sunspots alongside a dark coronal hole. Without sunspots, we've got no solar flares, and in 171 angstroms, we see that the bright spot was really the only candidate to have them. So let's go to the solar wind. Middle panel in purple shows the plasma speed ramping up as we are inside a coronal hole stream right now, but we haven't seen it hit 500 kilometers per second yet, so it's a modest stream only. Geomagnetism remains quiet. We know that another coronal hole is facing Earth today. Yesterday, you heard that the earthquake risk should be rising once more, and it began slowly with the 6.2 on the ridge in the southeast Pacific. We often see these precede South American upticks. We've also had over 50 small tremors this morning at an allegedly extinct volcano in Iceland. If not for that extinct designation, it would be one of the top alert mountains on the island. Earthquake watch continues. Let's do a bit of weather starting here at GO 16. It is easy to get fixated on the low ripping across the southern states, but it was actually the northwest that got hit the hardest including tornado activity that allowed some locals who managed to find safe shelter to capture the vortex as it swept by outside. As of a few hours ago, there were no reports of injuries, so let's also quickly note that the line of storms is still hitting Australia. Sydney Airport shut down a bit ago as hail, high wind, lightning, and flash flood potential continue pounding the area. November Global Climate Report was finally released. As you see the mix of color here, Know that we are virtually guaranteed once again to see the global yearly average temperature drop slightly for the third consecutive year. Let's work around the Earth and then head out to space. Interesting before and afters in Malawi showing how the moving of the nation's capital to a mid-sized fishing village completely transformed the city over the last four decades. Up next, the mystery of the massive dust is solved. Observations of its transport long distances across Earth was confirmed but never really understood. Until the high lift and electrostatic nature of the particles was modeled, the global electric circuit is a key player. Up next, there is a stream of material in the northern galactic hemisphere but it's not on an orbital path. They say also that in addition to the flow of the stream, there is lateral motion of the entire segment. They call this the orphan stream. Last but not least, we're heading deep into space and presumably far back in time. Just how far? Well, that's a fun question. You see, regardless of whether you are traditional mainstream, electric universe, or the newer plasma universe persuasion, which NASA and Princeton switched to the last few years, the early parts of the universe should have had a lot less heavy metal. While the production processes of the metal differs across those paradigms, they all still require time. And so finding only the third ever metal-free cosmic cloud means it was likely cast out from the interactions with the rest of the universe very early on. Imagine if you broke your finger as a child, and as the rest of you grew up decade after decade, your finger stayed appearing like a child's finger your whole life. That's what it's like to spot this cloud through the cosmic splendor. Folks, we're giving away a bunch of stuff on our Facebook page today. Head over to facebook.com slash observatory project for a chance to win free stuff. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 425 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.